have good news today and something that if you've been following along you probably think is good too. The good news is these little suckers labeled uh, you can't really see it <laughs> labeled wrapped not exploding and not in the fridge they don't have to be kept in the fridge right now because they're fine just how they are what so we're in a different part of my apartment this is my essentially my my workshop my all my soaps are on that table and then all of my supplies for the most part are on that shelf um, so this is where I label everything. This is where I am packaging my bath bombs. And I thought that I would show you to begin this video because this is what we've been working on for the past, is it five or six videos now? And it was very discouraging there for a while because they just wouldn't get right. I, I couldn't figure out what their problem was. Um, but I think I have troubleshooted all of the issues. The fridge was a lifesaver in this one. A lot of people tell you to put it in their oven. Um, a warm oven, for me it was a cold fridge. So you just never know what are gonna make your particular bath bombs happy. Um, so now I have these little, or these larger ones, they're more of a regular size. And then these little baby bath bombs. And I think these are just the cutest thing. These also behaved better, whereas these were fine in and out of the fridge right after being made, these were not. I have read that the larger your bath bomb is, the harder it is to make it stick together. I think that plays true for the harder it is to make it dry, the harder it is just to make it in general. So I have larger bath bomb molds. might wait till later to try those out. You'll know when I try them, but uh, it might be a little bit. So today, we don't have to try these. We don't have to make these today. We are making, going back to our lovely, lovely roots of soap because the bath bombs are done. It is such a relief to say that after so many times of saying, the bath bombs are exploding. And they shouldn't be. <sighs> the bath bombs are labeled, they are packaged, they are happy, and they are done. They are done. And I'll show you, I have peppermint um, bath bombs that I just made there in the fridge. And they're so cute. So, hold on. Okay, are you ready for cute? That is cute. And it's peppermint. And I mean, that's peppermint. I don't know if you can see it. You kind of can. But it's also sparkly. Let's see. I made every single one just a little bit different because I think that that kind of, I don't know, I feel like that's just how a bath bomb should be because there's so much room for them all to be unique. So why not? And then I have one of the little babies. I think these things are so cute. Once we actually have, you know, space, as I've said before, we are currently building our house. Once we currently have space, I will likely get my own little mini fridge for bath bombs and whatnot. However, we have legitimately nowhere to put that, so not gonna happen just yet. Welcome back y'all to the Simple and Beautiful Life Kitchen. My name is Shelby and I'm the owner of Simple and Beautiful Life. And today we, if you've been following along, you'll be so happy to hear this. We're making soap, not bath bombs. <laughs> I know I'm happy to hear that. Today we have one kind of soap. It is our toasted hazelnut soap. We're bringing it back this year. The, um, 
Only difference is from this year to last year is that we will be adding a scrub element. So we will have one that is just regular soap and one that is a scrub, which is pretty much what we've been doing with all of our, our all of the soaps that we're making now. So let's get started. Okie dokie. I've got my oils all measured out. Boop. As you can see, if you watched my my last soap being made soap making video, I talked about needing a bigger bowl and I talked about getting it when I go to the grocery store and I didn't do that. So yeah. <laughs> You ever have something that's just on your grocery list for years? I feel like that's normal, right? I will say, if in this particular video, you see me kind of like fumbling around or holding things all weird, it's because I, <laughs> Messed up my pinky um, and kind of the other finger too. That one's a little bruised and I can't bend it <laughs> While I don't actually think it's broken. It is sore and it is swollen um, If you notice this pinky looks like a pinky This pinky kind of looks like a fat snowman with all of its little rolls and whatnot. So Yeah and of course it's my right hand. So I have tried to do things with my left and it's way worse. Um, in terms of being able to do things, my left is just stupid. It's almost like it doesn't even exist in real life because it can't do anything. So if you see me uh, being a little less graceful and fumbling around more than any normal video, why okay I am going I'm gonna run a stick blender through my oils real quick because I do use coconut in my oils so the coconut oil needs to be blended in <laughs> now looks much better I am still waiting on my lye water to cool down I try to cook to soap as closely to room temperature as possible because I have in the past had issues with glycerin rivers so having everything as cooled down as it possibly can be really helps with those glycerin rivers and it slows down trace. It makes everything just a little bit more calm, controlled, manageable. Whereas you soap with, if you soap with your lye and your oils really hot, everything just speeds up really fast. And I can't bend my finger today. Well, we're making progress. You can see how many rolls it has. It's not usually, it's not usually like that. <laughs> Don't even ask how it happened. Just don't even ask. Add this. Where I say, I was making up my oils. Alrighty. I guess I don't need these just yet. I've added a little bit of brown mica to the oils. Let's bring you down here and show you. I like to add mica to my oils. Some people add it to um, the soap after, after they've added their lye water. I kind of like to do it as I go. That way, once I'm done, I can absolutely know that I have the right color that I want. Take some, 
take some adjustment as you work, in my opinion. This is kind of a statement to how badly I need a new um, <laughs> stick blender because you can see all these bubbles and that's just a result of the stick blender. I hope it's a result of the stick blender. Okay, so I have the brown added in. This is a toasted hazelnut scented soap. Um, so it's it's a hazelnut color, which is a very light brown. So I might not even, I added a tiny, tiny little scoop of brown mica, and that might be all I'm adding. However, my light and my oils are the same temperature now. Well, my oils are 98, my light is 100 degrees, which is just fine with me. I forgot to mention that this is a um, coconut milk soap, so the lye water will be a little bit milky because it is. And as you can see, my nails are still a mess. I think in general, I am a mess. My business is not. I'm very careful with everything I do in business, but that takes a lot of time and effort, and I think that Things like nails, if they go by the wayside. Well, I try, I try to have fun black Halloween nails. Once they start chipping off, I'm like, oh, I, I got stuff to do. I can't just be doing my nails all the time. <laughs> okay, so here you go. There you go. Um, this is very full again, as you can tell, because because who can't remember to find one little bowl at Walmart? Me. But as long as you stick bent blend slowly. It should be okay, you know? Okay. We're just moving right along. I have added my fragrance oil. Um, I used that, um, I added the almond to this, this soap, which I didn't do last year. I actually had a toasted hazelnut uh, scent. And this almond combined with a couple other oils, oh my gosh, it smells just Fabulous. I love it. Um, I also added some titanium dioxide because this was getting more of a chocolate milk color and not a toasted hazelnut color. Which is not at all what I was going for. Now we'll blend a little bit more and we'll be good to go. Go. It is starting to set up so it's ready for the mold. I don't like having my soap come to trace really quickly. It stresses me out.
right, almost done. Now the only thing left to do is add a little bit of sprinkles on top because of course you have to, you know? Now I have not yet purchased large packages of mica simply because I'm still kind of trying to figure out which brand I like best, which colors I like best of, of certain brands. So I'm still using just little bags until I finally figure out like, yes, y'all have the best blue, y'all have the best brown, y'all have the best this, y'all have the best that. That way I'm not buying larger tubs of of mica powders that I don't like, you know? And there's so many mica powders out there that it takes a while to get through them all to know who's really, who's really got the best stuff. And for some of them, it's like they really excel in one color and not the other. So for example, I got a tub, I forget who it was, but it was just a general red color. And while that red color was very strong, it did not, it did not perform very well in soap. I had to use tons of it to actually get a red color or else it would just be pink. And when you're going for red, especially during Christmas, pink doesn't cut it, you know? Okay, so I'll bring you down so you can see this. There we go. You have one with just a gentle line of the mica, and then one without, and they will get a gentle line of mica. And if you've ever wondered the best way to evenly sprinkle mica on your soap, it's a tea strainer. Now this idea, not mine. I would say most of my ideas when it comes to soap are not mine. Um, I have watched, I think I mentioned her in my last video, I forget. But I have watched a lot of royalty soap in order to just get ideas on tips and tricks because I would have never thought about a tea strainer for mica sprinkles, you know? So, you know, and we're all in the same community here where we're all... You know, she's doing amazing and that doesn't, that benefits me because she's been doing this for so long. You know, she started this basically when she was a kid. So now she knows, she knows so much more than I could at this time. So her being so good at this, it really benefits me because I can learn from her. And I can say, oh, hey, Royalty Soap says that. Let me try. And it's probably going to work out pretty well. So if you've ever, if you've ever thought, like, that maybe learning from someone or, you know, even just give, giving credit where credit is due, it's a powerful thing and I think that this community I think we we have the the power to do that you know because in the end no matter how many tips and tricks I take from other people or people take from me what I make will always be specific to me and that's kind of the beauty of soap is Every single bar is a little bit of an art piece. Unless you're just buying, you know, bulk soap from the grocery store, then it's all the exact same. But every single piece that I cut, it's always a little bit different. And the same will be for this. Some will have a little bit more mica, some will have a little bit less. And 
yeah like all art it's individual to the person who's creating it so the fact that we have youtube and we have the internet to learn from each other it's really quite a beautiful thing if you think about it because in the past that would have been much harder and without the internet you wouldn't have really known how to do it unless your neighbors did it and if your neighbors didn't do it you didn't know how to do it so the fact that we can learn from everybody on here is pretty amazing um i think that's pretty much it for today i've got my soap made and now i'll go work on editing these videos i have a wonderful project that i am starting on my own personal youtube it will not be out for a while. It's a set of videos that I will release um, in the future. It will take a little bit to record them. They will be very personal to me, very personal through some of the things that I've gone through in life. Mostly just health issues, how I handle them, what I do at the gym, things like that that are very personal to me. And outside of Simple and Beautiful Life, make up a huge portion of my life. So. That will be coming on my personal channel. I will link it down below whenever it's ready, so keep an eye on for that. Other than that, I hope you'll have a absolutely wonderful day today. The weekend's coming up, and I hope you guys have either really exciting, fun to do plans, or maybe even better yet sometimes, nothing planned whatsoever. Just relax, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your time off, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.